On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, World War II shipwrecks have disappeared. I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. So those of you who have watched this channel before know I'm a maritime historian, former merchant mariner. But one of my degrees I obtained was a master's in maritime history and nautical archaeology from East Carolina University. So nautical archaeology is really important to me. I find it a great tool to understand history and what happened in battles and the development of cultures and civilizations. Well, there's been a story ongoing for almost a decade now about wrecks in Southeast Asia being pillaged, looted, and just completely disappearing. And we have a rehash of that this past week. So I'm gonna give you the background on the story and talk about what's happening right now. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's get into the story. So this is a story back from 2016, NPR. Dutch World War II era shipwrecks have mysteriously disappeared. So in February of 1942, the Japanese were on their offensive. They were taking out Southeast Asia, they were taking what is modern day Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, with the objective to seize natural resources. And to do that, they were basically usurping the British, the Australians, the Dutch, the Americans that were in this region. And a series of battles were fought, including one of the most infamous, which is the Battle of the Java Sea. And in that battle, many vessels were lost or would be lost as a result of it including this vessel right here, the Dutch cruiser De Ruyter. And in 2016, evidence showed that the, the wreck of the De Ruyter, along with several others they identify as the Java and the Kortner, I believe that's the way you say it, have all disappeared. Basically, the wrecks were no longer there. They had basically been wiped off the map and raising the issue of what happened to them. That rose issues to this story, a Guardian story, this is in 2017, the world's biggest grave robbery, Asia's disappearing World War II shipwrecks. This story, and I'll have the link to all the stories in the show notes, is fantastic because it really goes in the detail talking about what's happening. So lots of times with wrecks, you have to worry about scavengers going on the wreck and taking objects. And, you know, they want to take a memento, a souvenir. That's not what this is. These vessels are being salvaged and used for their scrap metal. So these are vessels sunk before the atomic bombs, meaning this is unradiated metal. And that is a very rare commodity. There are wrecks at the bottom of Scapa Flow from when the Germans scuttled the high seas fleet in 1919. And those have been used, and a lot of that uh, metal is used in medical machinery and for medical sciences. Uh, those wrecks are unique because there's not crews on those vessels. Those ships were scuttled, so no, none of the crews died and were entombed in the vessels. These vessels in Southeast Asia but are war cemeteries. They're, they have the uh, bodies of those who died on board. And what we're seeing now are these wrecks are disappearing. And this story does a great job of going into it. Uh, and initially it was believed to be fishermen that were going in to some of these wrecks, but now we're seeing something out that these vessels are being salvaged, salvaged for their metal. And all throughout this region of Southeast Asia, we're seeing that take place. And when you go in here, they have a great chart here where they show some of the British ships that have been the subject of this, the Exeter, the Encounter, the Electra, Repulse, and Prince of Wales, the latter two we're going to talk about here in a minute. But then you come to this chart, which is a really good one, which shows you depth of water, and it shows you ships that have been salvaged and ships at risk. So, for example, the HMS Jupiter, where at least 100 sailors have died, is a ship that is potentially at risk. This is in 2017. Uh, they show a ship here, the USS Pope, a f flush deck destroyer. This is one of the four stack destroyers. That vessel has been salvaged, and the over uh, uh, all the Americans who were entombed on them uh, were basically disappeared. Three Japanese vessels which sank off the coast of Borneo have been done. And then as you get deeper and deeper here, you see other vessels that have been subjected to this, Prince of Wales, Repulse, the Australian cruiser, the Perth, the US cruiser, the, the Houston, and a slew of Dutch cruisers, including the Deruder and the Java, which have now basically disappeared. And what the Guardian talked about in 2017 is what's being done. 
and how they're sending down divers down to this area, especially the, the vessels that were in shallower water. They would plant explosives on the vessel, break the vessel up, and then use these vessels with these large kind of clam buckets on board to shovel in the material and salvage it. And they're scooping up not just the metal, but what's remains of the crew. There's a story over on the Australian National Maritime Museum about the HMAS Perth. And Perth was a cruiser that fought alongside the Americans, the British, the Dutch, and the Australians in what was known as the ABDA command. Fought at the Battle of Java Sea, and then while the vessel was trying to extricate itself from the Java Sea alongside USS Houston, the ships were sunk. And according to the diving on Perth, large vessels of this ship have disappeared. The entire bow section of the vessel is missing, along with parts of the bottom of the vessel, the vessel on its side. And large sections of the bottom are missing, meaning that this ship is being actively salvaged. And this is a war cemetery, a tomb for those sailors on board. And it's being done. Now, this is back in 2017 we were hearing these reports. Well, here's story 2023, just this month. Uh, UK Royal Navy distressed and concerned by illegal Chinese salvage of World War II wrecks. There was a report of this vessel, a Chinese vessel, that was over the site of HMS Repulse and Prince of Wales. This is the battle cruiser and battleship that were sunk by the Japanese right at the beginning of World War II in the Pacific, December 10th, 1941. And reports were that the vessel, the Chun Hung 68, was dredging that area and salvaging parts of the, the vessel. As a matter of fact, there were images that came out of guns and elements of the ship being offloaded. And this, of course, provoked a big reaction from the British government, from the Royal Navy, about the seizing of these vessels, the salvaging of these vessels, and the desecration of the war graves. Well, you get this story from Reuters over a G-Captain. The Malaysians have detained that vessel linked to suspected illegal salvage of the World War II wrecks. Uh, you'll see right here in the story, a ship registered in Fuzhou, China, and carrying 32 crew failed to present anchoring permits during a routine inspection in waters off Malaysia's southern Johor State on Sunday, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency said. Authorities found scrap metal and cannon shells on the ship with further checks. And so the vessel has been seized and is currently being held. Now that raises into question who owns these wrecks and what is the legal status of the wrecks. And believe it or not, the legal status of wrecks is a little bit not clear. Let's put it that way. This story, uh, which was done over at the Carnegie Foundation, is probably one of the best ones I found on this. So there's a treaty, what's called UNCLOS, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. And the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea specifically states under Article 95 and 96 how warships are owned in perpetuity by, by uh, nations. They have something called uh, sovereign immunity and therefore don't fall under the rules and regulations of other nations. Uh, what is not clear is about the status of wrecks. Now, within the United States, there's a clear law about this. Uh, within U.S. territorial waters and within our economic exclusion zone, there's a treaty with that. But there's not a treaty that spans the entire globe on this. And this article talks about that. Now, there was an attempt by the Institute of, of, of Law to basically get a new treaty. There was a uh, meeting in 2015 in Tallinn, Estonia, with an attempt to get a resolution passed that would deal with this. Basically, the idea is to define what a wreck is, to identify what a sunken state ship is, and most importantly, to put the respect in that even though the vessel is sunk in territorial waters or within the economic exclusion zone or in international waters, those vessels remain the, the property of the flag that flew from them. So Prince of Wales and Repulse, for example, although they're within the Malaysian EZ, would remain British property and territory, and only the British government could decide what happens to it. Obviously, that is not happening. Instead, what we're seeing is illegal salvage taking place out in the world's oceans, 
this steel is really valuable. It's being salvaged up. It's being scooped up. The wrecks are being desecrated. And there's not a lot of enforcement being done. When the British first learned about this back in 2016, 2017, they sent out survey teams to go resurvey the wrecks. There's satellite imagery that, that oversees the areas involved, but it involves enforcement. And more importantly, it involves treaty issues. Now, remember, before the United States gets all big and heavy about this, we have never ratified UNCLOS. We're one of the few nations that have not ratified the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. So it really doesn't do anything for us to say anything because we don't, we're not a signature, uh, a signatory to the convention. We follow the convention, uh, whereas other nations don't. China, for example, which this ship belongs to that was doing the illegal salvage, is a signature to UNCLOS, but they don't follow UNCLOS. So the irony of it all, U.S. doesn't sign the treaty, we follow it, the Chinese sign it, they don't follow it. This is a dicey issue because it's dealing with the remains of wrecks. And there's a thin line, obviously, between archaeology and salvage. Salvage is purely monetary. Archaeology is, is monitoring, cataloging, and trying to find the history out. That is a much different thing than salvage. And this needs to be clarified. There needs to be enforcement against illegal salvage of vessels sunk with bodies on board. Because if this is happening in Southeast Asia, it's happening in other parts of the world. And there are a lot of vessels sunk on the bottom of the oceans with the bodies of sailors from many nations around the world. So, Hope you enjoyed today's story. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below, or you can go ahead and hit the Patreon button or hit Patreon down below in the show notes where you can become a monthly, yearly subscriber. Until our next story, this is Sal signing off.